today's episode, let's give you a quick primer on how to use a mixing board. Now, this is not gonna be in depth, and this is not a review of this mixing board, even though it is a really cool mixing board. So I just wanted to let you know that up front. So if you were looking for a review, if there's enough demand, we'll do that later. But uh, right now we're just trying to do kind of a basic overview of how a soundboard works. Now, why, if you're doing sound for film, do you care about this? Well, I wanna answer that question first. First of all, anytime you can understand how audio recording works or how audio, in this case, uh, if you were doing this for live sound, how sound reinforcement works. They're very closely related in a lot of ways. And being able to understand how live sound works can only make you a better sound location mixer for film. It will improve your skills and your ability, especially to troubleshoot problems. That's the thing with live sound is that the live sound engineers have to be on top of their game because they pretty much get one take. And if they mess it up, well, they've messed up the show. In the case of film, we can always do another take, or in most cases, we can do another take. So <laughs> um, anyway, let's jump in and talk a little bit about mixing boards. Now, this is a digital mixer. It's a little bit different than traditional analog mixers, but it, uh, it shares a lot of the same concepts. So there are a lot of things that are still very much the same. It looks very complicated when you first look at it, but in fact, it's actually pretty straightforward once you understand a few basic things, and that's what I wanna to cover today. Now, the first thing to understand is that while it looks complicated, because there are all these buttons, these are faders, linear faders down here. Um, there's this screen where you can change settings, all these knobs or buttons. What do they all mean? Well, first thing to understand is we have 16 inputs here. We can bring in 16 microphones and or instruments into this mixing board. Let's show you the back where all those come in. First of all, we need to talk about the difference between microphone and line level. So what happens on a mixer, it does a number of things. Of course, it mixes all the sound from different inputs together. But the first thing it does is it takes, for example, a microphone, say we plug a microphone into input one here. It takes that signal and amplifies it from a very, very weak microphone signal up to what we call line level. And that's a much stronger signal and a much greater amplitude. So that's the first thing. So that's the difference between microphone level and line level. Now, these inputs here can take a mic input or a line level input. So for example, if you have an instrument that uh, produces a line level output, like say, for example, a keyboard, you could plug those in here as well. Some instruments, say for example, acoustic instruments with pickups oftentimes have a, an output that's closer to a microphone level signal. So you can put either of those into these inputs, these 16 inputs, and from there, it goes into the mixing board. Now, we also have outputs here. In this case, we have 12 XLR outputs plus two quarter inch outputs. So this, for example, is where you may send the output of the mixing board, the stereo mix, a left and a right channel output. After everything's been mixed together, you would then send this up to the stage where typically the power amplifiers sit. The power amplifiers would take the line level mix signal and raise that even higher to send to the speakers, which is then, of course, what gets played back to the audience. You could also, in this case, use the 11 and 12. This is the kind of the right and left main outputs or on quarter inch, you could do either way. There's also what's called an AES out. AES is a digital signal. So on this one, you can send out a left and a right signal or channel one and channel two, um, if you are going to send the audio to some other sort of device that can accept digital AES input. So for example, here I might send this to a recorder or a camera if I wanted to do that. Down in the right hand corner here, we also have uh, some digital connections. So we have a USB connection, so you can actually record the output of this mixer to a computer via USB. We also have a network and an S, what's called an S-Link port here. This allows you actually to do uh, what is called a digital snake. Let me explain first of all the concept of a snake. A snake is a group of cables that allows you to send audio signals from the stage to the mixer and then from the mixer back to the stage to be sent to the speakers. And typically those snakes in the analog world are literally a snake, a bunch of cables all wrapped into one big thick cable. And you have to run it between the board, which is typically sitting at the back of the theater, somewhere near the back of the theater, um, and then run that up to the stage where there's a, usually a distribution box. It has a variety of different XLR inputs and outputs. So um, what this S-Link allows you to do is send a much smaller cable um, and even potentially wireless, but you connect a, a a network cable here, and that makes it so you can send all of that information back and forth between the stage and the mixer digitally on a network cable. So that's the general idea. There are a variety of different protocols that can be used here, and we're not gonna go into that. 
but that's the general idea. Now what you need to understand is that each of these vertical columns here represent the controls for one of those inputs. So here you can see it says input one, input two, so on and so forth, up to input 16. And then we have a master fader over here, which we'll come to in just a minute. So the main idea is that this column right here controls input number one, whatever you have coming in on that, whether it's a microphone or an instrument, input two, so on and so forth. It just so turns out on this board, you can actually change these names here to represent what's coming in on that channel. So if we wanted to come in here, we could actually come in here and change that name. Now, the second thing to understand is that typically the way that a mixing board is laid out is that the audio signal comes in and goes through each of the items from the top of the mixer to the bottom of the mixer. That is to say, for example here, the fader is the last thing that's applied to that input generally. And all the things at the top are the first things. So for example, here's our gain trim, our preamp, how much amplification we wanna to bring to that signal. Next up, we have our high pass filter. Then we have a gate, then a compressor, then our pan, um, so on and so forth. And then we, of course, we finally have our uh, fader right here. Incidentally, it also has an EQ, which happens to be, in this case, off to this side. Uh, but again, it's represented here. Let me just show you here this individual input. Input number one, for example, first of all, we have our gain. Now, as I change the setting on the gain here, you can see that reflected here. The next thing we have is the high pass filter. And we can actually see what that looks like here. And you can see as I change the setting, it's showing how much of the low end of the signal we're going to cut off here and attenuate. That is to get rid of that low frequency rumble. The next thing that is applied is what is called the gate. This is essentially for cases where when someone's not speaking on a microphone, for example, or not playing an instrument, you want the mixer to sort of attenuate the signal that's coming in. So this will help reduce potential for feedback um, and just make sure you're not picking up sound that you don't wanna pick up. You then have a compressor, or actually next you have your EQ. Next in line, it's the EQ. So here, for example, I can uh, change the overall sound at different frequencies. I can sweep that across the entire frequency. So here are the low frequencies, high frequencies. This is the amount I wanna boost it or cut it. See how that works there, that's the general idea. After that, we then have our compressor. And our compressor is controlled here. You can see we can change our threshold setting, how much makeup gain we do after that. Just works like a typical compressor. We're not gonna cover that in detail here, but that's the next thing that is applied. Then of course we have our pan control. I can pan to the left, you know, to the right, or just keep it right in the center like that. After all these things, the preamp, gain, high pass filter, gate, compressor, pan, effects, things of that nature, then you can control the fader here. And this is how much of this individual channel gets sent to the overall mix of sound. And again, with pan, you can choose to send it mostly to the left channel, the left speaker, or the right channel, the right speaker. And then of course you can control the overall level of the mix here with the master fader. Now, why does all this matter? Well, again, the thing that's important to understand here is, first of all, now that you understand how a mixer is generally laid out, this will help you solve problems. So for example, if you're having something funny come in over channel number one or something funny in the mix and you're not sure where it is, you can, for example, press this pre after fader listen. This allows you to listen to just this channel. And what you can do is put your headphones in here and listen to that to make sure, you know, see what's happening. Is, is the weird sound I'm hearing coming on this channel or is it maybe one of the other channels? So you can quickly go through and pre-fade or listen to each of those so you can hear what's going on. Of course, you can mute each of the channels. So for example, a good thing to do when you're doing live sound and when you're doing recording is if there's a channel or a microphone that's not being used, it's best to mute it. But also the whole layout helps you to solve problems too. So for example, in this case, if I wasn't sure if there was, you know, maybe the gate was doing something weird, I could turn that off really quickly for that channel. If it was maybe the compressor or I was trying to fine tune something, I could turn those off very quickly and be able to kind of troubleshoot and figure out, okay, is that causing the problem? Or can I get that out of the way so I can hear the signal in its purity and know what's going on? That's why it's important to understand. It's also important to understand the path through which the sound travels. So again, it gets amplified first, then we roll off the low frequency rumble that we don't need. We may apply that gate so that when the mic is open, that is to say no one's talking into it right away, we could actually attenuate the signal there. 
After that, we apply the compressor. And then after that, it applies the pan. After that, we apply any effects and uh, then we can apply the fader. So again, understanding that signal path helps you to troubleshoot problems and know what's happening overall. So I get a lot of questions about, hey, I did this and I'm getting this problem with a lot of noise. What Can you give me any advice? Well, <laughs> I'm teaching you now how to figure out where the noise may be coming in. So those are all things that you can look at and turn them on and off one at a time so you can figure out what's going on. And oftentimes it means turn everything off except for the you know, pretty much the gain and just see what's happening on that individual channel. So there's a very high level overview of mixing boards, why it's important to understand how they work, even if you're doing sound for film. And I should also say there are productions, film productions, where they do use mixers like this. And uh, typically they're the larger productions are generally going to involve a stage. Um, but there are lots of cool things you can do. And there are a lot of cool things to learn once you understand this, you become a better mixer for film as well. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. If you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. And if you'd like to be notified each time a new episode becomes available, go ahead and click on that bell icon. We'll talk to you again next week. Mm -hmm.